Hi and welcome to this video. Uh, it's just a quick model I sculpted in ZBrush, just thought I would show you and in this video I'm going to take it from ZBrush, I'm going to Z remesh it uh, to give me various levels of detail and then I'm going to paint it in Substance Painter so I hope you enjoy it and I'll narrate as we go through a little bit also. So. And to start off, I keep the mesh uh, as a as a mesh model for a fairly long time, just so you know you get some interesting shapes come out of it when you uh, sort of stretch and pull it around. Uh, once you dyna mesh it, it, it kind of um, gets rid of all the errors and and problems. You see all the holes and stretches, and creates some really interesting shapes. You can see the legs there really um really low poly really in, you know it's because they're stretched basically giving it eyes fairly early on gives it some sort of base to work from it helps you sort of shape the head a little more and makes it feel a bit more Sort of like there's something there if you like well, it does for me anyway not for everybody I guess it's different uh, I've done quite a lot of ZBrush models and uh, I think we're gonna start posting some more on here uh, I really like the flow with the workflow from ZBrush into substance it works really well once you've mastered Z remesh and you, you can get a good low poly sort of version then bake it Bake the high version uh, detail onto the onto the low detail, then it, it can work really well. Once you've got that process down, it's really worth doing. So, so that I activate Dynam Dynamesh right here and I start sculpting in some details um, on the sort of lowest, not the lowest, but fairly low res still. And then I crank it up a little later on. Didn't take me long to do this, probably about an hour and a half for, you know, just sculpting and then painting it. Just did it in my own time, just relaxing really, just sculpting. Uh, you, if you're using ZBrush or you're starting to use ZBrush, it's really, you know, you really should try and use it every day if you can, just to keep sort of with the flow of it because it, it's a very different workflow from something like Maya or, or Max and even the buttons and everything's different. So using it regularly sort of burns, you know, that muscle memory, things become a lot easier. very therapeutic I find ZBrush it's literally is like creating uh, a model from from clay quite literally once you've got the tools done you, you kind of don't think about them anymore and you just think about this sort of sculpting the, the creative process which is exactly what you need and substance paint I find the same as substance it's kind of the same sort of process a very artistic sort of approach um, and that's fantastic, it's what an artist sort of needs really. Instead of it being too technical. 
and there's some fantastic artists using this package it's, it's pretty astonishing what people come up with I didn't work from any sort of concept. I just I started this from an idea that I've got uh, for something that I'm working on, and the only brief I sort of had was a spidery alien type creature, one of the smallest of uh, sort of a few that I'm going to be doing. And this is what sort of came up. That was the, I sort of started sculpting, and um, and this is what I came out with. It's just a concept, basically. One of the ideas I had for this creature was, uh, was that the brief had some light coming off it because they're in dark places and I thought it'd be cool if they sort of emitted some sort of light and that's why I put that sort of bulbous thing on the top of its head, it glows green so when you see it, you know, if you're playing through this environment that I'm creating you'll see any, anywhere where you see this colour glowing green you'll know that these creatures are about sort of adding detail on the surface now uh, very subtle detail using the alpha and spray I started painting because I sometimes paint the sculpt in ZBrush and I started painting the eyes and then I thought no it's time to to move it across the substance painter and I just uh, so what I my process for that is basically use polygroups I polygroup the mesh up and then I Z remesh it using the polygroups get it as clean as I possibly can um, and then I sort of polish it off and tweak it make it um, neat uh, within ZBrush and then I export the low version the low uh, poly version of the mesh and the highest with the detail because I bake the detail from the, from the DynaMesh back onto the um, onto the high version of this mesh and then I bring them both into Substance Painter and then bake the detail back down onto the low version the low poly version and this is what you're seeing here this 
it's about quite low compared to the high one and it's got the high high detail baked into it you can still see the veins on the sort of top of the head and stuff so it kind of worked out pretty well a couple of little glitches here and there uh, but that's okay I didn't record all of substance it got a bit long and it got pretty boring I thought you might, you guys might get bored watching it so I just uh, recorded the first bit and then sped through the last bits and you can then see obviously you saw the result at the start but you see uh, the end result at the end also do this mouth I was looking at the ins inside of a snake's mouth I think it was a snake um, and just to see what sort of colors and, and stuff they had and that's kind of where I got the uh, you know the colors for this If you like that subscribe we're going to do a lot more of these and if you liked it hit that like button and um, I hope to see you next time bye for now